Hi, we're Circleways, and we're hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. You guys are currently touring the sophomore album. Um, listening to the record, it, it's a punch, man. Like it's, it just goes. Like I love it. Um, tell me about the the process for this record. You guys worked with Alan Mulder on this one, and how different was it from when you guys first worked with Dan on the first record? Any research, Dan? And I try, I man. I try. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> um, both, both quite similar in their sort of patience and like laid back the way they both work is, is similar but um, obviously Dan's more known for his clean cut stuff and, and right. um, Alan's a, a rock guy so yeah. that was it when we wrote the record it was it was quite evident that it needed that tougher side to it um, so we brought in one of the best rock and roll producers of all time <laughs> and it's made it sound great. Now I've seen when you guys talk about the first record uh, you guys talk about you guys are still kind of finding your sound um, coming into this new album how did you guys go about as far as finding your sound and how did you know like that was the sound? Um, well, I think Kieran wrote about 150 demos and then sent loads of them to, to the rest of us. And it was just kind of a process of going, yep, yeah, no, no, yeah, 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 no. And then, yes. yeah, more yeses eventually. But um, yeah, it was kind of just, and then eventually there was, I think when you sent Wake Up over, I think everyone just sort of went, yes, that's, that's the thing that we want to be doing. So yeah. was that the track that really initiated this whole album? I think that, that felt was quite like the a catalyst, impact, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, I, I definitely wrote probably two albums worth of like sort of Young Chasers indie kind of stuff, and then but nothing really felt like it was sticking, and it was just like going through the motions a little bit. Yeah. So once Wake Up came about, that really felt like the you know the starting point of of what we wanted to do next, and um, we just kind of took it upon ourselves to go. If the fans don't like it, then you know. <laughs> Sorry, but we like it, so that, you know, right. that's what we'll do. And, and this process, um, majority of the band is in London now, right? And yeah. and you're still. So you know my postcard. <laughs> so you, you you guys didn't even actually work on it together while you guys while you were writing the record. No, it's so. Do you remember that band, Postal Service? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like a modern day. Like I send emails and stuff, and everyone goes, hmm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah like, as Sam just said, yes and no. So, um, but I, I mean, I would have preferred them to all be in Liverpool, but they left me alone. <laughs> uh, so I have my little uh, studio up there, right. and um, but it, it seems to be working. I mean, I don't know. I d every band does it differently, but I think uh, that the way we do it is is kind of cool and interesting, and and it you know we're open to whatever, so it may change in the future. But for now, it's it's made a good record, I think. Yeah. And what really inspired the lyrics this time around? They're a little more darker than the previous record. Um, is it just you guys growing up? Like, what was that? Getting really old and Man. sad. Um, it's where life wrecks you. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, I guess, like, Young Chases was, like, nostalgic and looking back. Mm. And this record was more about in the present time. It was written in early 2016. And there was a lot of crazy shit going on with Brexit in the UK and... Um, you know, a lot of immigrant stuff being happening d down south and right. all that. So I mean, there's lots of stuff going on. It, it never, the record was never intended to be like a political record right. or or what have you. But there's a couple of tunes that are more serious. Um, but I think that's just part of like the band developing and maturing. And you know, you can't write about <coughs> getting drunk in bars <laughs> for every song. I mean, it happens in most old. songs, <laughs> but just not every song, though. No. Now, I, I remember reading um, that you were uncomfortable talking about politics or even stepping into anything about politics. So how do how are you able to write? I mean, the title track is clearly a political song. So, like, how are you able to sit down and write something like that when you're out of your comfort zone? I think, like, I always sort of see it as more of a humanist view and, like, a kind of... I definitely don't keep up with politics too much, um, I feel quite out of my depth when you know if a conversation about it starts. But I think from a pure like the song "Different Creatures" was, a, was literally just about how can we turn these people away who are just trying to live, and you know, yeah. if you send them back, they're going to die. So right. to me, that's not, it's not. It's sort of it's much broader than any sort of political thing. It's like just a human point of view, right. um, and that to me was really alien, and, and I can't believe that that still goes on. Right. In this in this world, um, but Sam's much more political than me. He knows a lot, a lot more just, stuff. Yeah, just toss that over there. You there, there you go. That. See that? See, he was getting uncomfortable. Yeah, he started <laughs> getting uncomfortable. I had to leave. 
Now, okay, so the, the tracks are done. Uh, you guys are ready to go into the studio and record. Like, did you guys meet up for this? Is, was this still via online uh, poster, right. postal service status, or did you guys actually get to go into the studio together? What was that like? Uh, we, sp us, we spent about a month in the studio, just the four of us, just playing the songs and like configuring everything properly. I think we like it when we go into the studio that everything's just done. Mm -hmm. And we've never really been in a band that likes to go in with like a half-baked idea and go, oh, yeah, we'll just finish it on the day sort of thing. Yeah. Like every time we've gone in, it's been, this is exactly what the song is. Right. And let's just focus on making it sound good. So yeah, we did like a month of that and then a month in the studio with Alan and then a couple of weeks mixing, that was it. Done. And also it's not the 80s, so like studios cost loads of money. <laughs> and if you're not ready and prepared, then, you know, right. your label are going to be really upset. So is that why your demos kind of seem like final projects? I, I mean, I think for any band, if you've got any nous <laughs> about you and any sort of, if you want to make it, you have to, nowadays, you have to be good on Logic or Pro Tools or Cubase or whatever, because why wouldn't you be? There's a thousand other kids who are going to be great on it, so you need to get good on it. And that's what we've kind of, we all are pretty decent on it now, so. Right. Now, going, going into the studio with Alan, um, this guy is a rocker. So, I mean, what, what did he have you guys do differently in the studio? We didn't do that many takes. That's the thing I noticed was, was it more of a more of a live record. Yeah, it was just kind of. I remember when we did the first song we did was "Wake Up," and I did two takes, and then he was just like, "Yeah, we're he done." Thought he, he thought he was rehearsing the song, <laughs> and finished. And Alan was yeah. like, yeah. "Sounds great," and he was like, "Okay, should we re do the same?" He's like, "No, you've done it. I've done it now." And you kind of like, <laughs> but I'd, I, I sort I of accidentally got like a bit drunk before <laughs> doing it, and sort of sat down. I was like, "Oh well, I guess that's it now." So yeah, there was just loads of that really. It's just like do a couple of takes, yeah. and it's just gonna sound, you know, it's gonna sound good. So there's no point in making it sound perfect. It sort of sucks the life out of it. So I think that was a big thing really. It's just like super fast. Yeah. Mm. And what about challenges as far as like, I I wouldn't. I mean, would you say it's a new direction? Um, it's different from the first record. Um, but I mean, any challenges to get to this new direction? No, it's quite easy really. I think we just um, we just went let's do that and then did it. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> I think live we we basically we 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 bought like bigger amps. <laughs> the only challenge really was trying to fit them in the van, <laughs> which is small. dude. People are flying nowadays. Yeah. What are you doing in a van? Uh, our van has wings, so it's great. <laughs> okay. Don't worry about it. Tesla, <laughs> Tesla, mate. Well, you kind of you kind of answered my next question. Uh, this new record, how does it change the live show? Um, aside from the amps, like, is there anything different with the live show? Um, well, we come, we sort of had to rethink our whole light sort of package mm -hmm. to sort of like make it reflect what we were talking about in the songs more so I think so that was quite an interesting thing because on the first album it was very sort of bright and sunny but right. on this one because obviously it's a lot the themes are a lot darker that was a big thing we had to sort of address but I don't know like I think I mean it's just like making everything bigger bigger guitars you know the band we all have bigger instruments and I don't know, we move more maybe I don't know I think we're still doing the same thing we've been doing the last three years but the songs the songs do all the work for us really we don't we don't we're not doing much difference it's just bigger sounding I guess right now with the tour right now you guys are almost done with this North American run um, what are the plans after it um, you guys plan on coming back here anytime soon or any more tours out back home um, well then, so the next yeah that's it isn't you it? guys are breaking up yeah. <laughs> um, we're doing Glastonbury in was it two weeks? Nice. Yeah, yeah so we that, two days off when we get home. And then yeah, Glastonbury. And then we do Glastonbury, and we're on uh, so we're on like the second, like the other stage there, which is about fifty thousand people or something. So that's it. That's yeah. That's it. It's just like an even fifty, um, <laughs> but then so yeah, just then just look like we're just doing loads of festivals really, and yeah. then we come back here in September with um, Two Door Cinema Club. Oh, cool. So we're doing like a big tour with them, um, and then yeah, just keep going really. Like we got loads of festivals and that's yeah. that's that's the first thing to do really now for those that haven't heard the record yet um why should they go ahead and check it out to close us off uh it's probably quite cheap it's like the same as like two beers <laughs> um it's probably the greatest rock and roll record of 2017 maybe 2018 as well um what else it's loads of riffs Lots of riffs, that's that's for sure. Yeah, so like it's cheap and it's got loads of riffs. Yeah. Imagine that. It's the future of music. <laughs>